giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Hello and welcome to the Summer F4 Catathon broadcast on First Updates Now. From F4, I'm Nick, and I'll be your host. Our producer tonight is the editor-in-chief of FUN, Tyler Olds. With seven days to create robots in CAD to face a, the unique game challenge, Rolling Rampage, some submissions will leave you in awe tonight, while others may not shine as bright. What's important here is that all teams are improving their CAD skill to prepare them for the next season of competition. Now let's introduce our judges. To start, we have Garrett from FRC 3200 Rapticon. Next, we have Julia from Robot in Three Days, Snow Problem. We also have Andrew from FRC 254, The Cheesy Poots. And last but not least, we have Aaron, an alum of Team FRC 3863, Pantherbotics. Thank you to all of our judges for taking the time to make this event happen. So let's break down a little bit about what the Catathon is, including this Catathon's game, Rolling Rampage, and how the judging process works. To start, the Catathon is open to anyone who wants to hone their CAD skills. Teams robots were judged based on a standardized rubric in effectiveness, creativity, and detail by our fantastic judging panel. As for how the show will be laid out, we'll be going through places 62 to 16 uh, in random order uh, with some judge comments on them. And then we'll slow down for places 15 to number one uh, as we get closer and we'll be spending a little bit more time talking about those robots. This year's game, Rolling Rampage, was played on a standard FRC playing field um, and involved shooting. Uh, knocking 24-inch uh, exercise balls off of the center truss and scoring them in a moving goal on either end. In the end game, teams lifted themselves off the ground onto the truss um, using the pictured bars. We have a lot of really fantastic robots to show you all tonight, so let's jump right into our judging. All right, start us off with team number 664. Thanks, Nick. So team 664 is uh, here at rank 37. And I think that they're a good one to kick us off because they kind of capture what a lot of the robots we'll be seeing tonight are, which is robots inspired by team 254 in 2014. They were the world champions that year and they had an architecture that consisted of a front intake that could grab the ball off the floor and then a shooter flywheel that would shoot the ball out the top with the assistance of a, of a hood. And then obviously to tackle all the climbing challenges and the retrieval of the ball on top of the truss, many of these teams took that 254 architecture and then added in some type of climber. Specifically to team 664, I really liked um, their intake. I thought it was one of the few that was actually strong enough. Um, I do think that their shooter as just a super long half inch hex shaft is going to bend when a ball is getting compressed between it and the hood. And so that'll be a problem. It's also missing um, some electronics and that kind of hurts its detail score. But overall, I did like this submission and I think it kind of sets a standard about which to judge these other similar architectures. Oh, well, we have some more uh, images here, right? So. Um, 664, they have a uh, WCP um, Falcon Swerve, which I thought was, uh, you know, good for this game, but other judges have other opinions on the usefulness of Swerve in this game. I already talked about the intake and how I thought that was um, robust enough. I think their climber was lacking in a little bit of detail, but otherwise, I do think that having just a single telescoping tube is a reasonably fast way to knock down the... Um, the ball without having to raise a much larger climber. I would have liked to see maybe a bit more detail in the hook though. And then finally, I did like their feeder mechanism um, that was uh, shown just back one slide. So I, I think this was a good submission overall though. Now let's take a look at our next team. Yeah, so this robot was a really great robot in a lot of different aspects. 
I really enjoyed the intake and how the intake could possibly work if um, it was just refined a little bit. Currently, the power transmission is not that well defined on this robot uh, for the intake, but I really like the attention to detail, especially with regards to compliance and how um, the robot will interact on the field. Furthermore, I really like um, just kind of the pinball mechanism that they have for shooting the balls. It's a really great option for these um, 2014 style balls. In terms of stuff that can be improved, I really want to take a look at kind of the modeling of the weldments or these connections right here. From the CAD, it's not apparent that whether or not these are welds or gussets, and it would really help to like show the welds inside of the CAD by drawing dots. Um, furthermore, um, the most critical thing is that when the intake is sewed out and the ball is collected, um, the ball is, isn't necessarily going to settle on the paddle right there. Um, the ball is going to be hit off axis, uh, causing a lot of variation in your shot. And now Lastly, let's take. Yep. Now let's take a look at our rank number forty-six team, team six seventy-nine. Yeah, this is a really solid design. Um, it's a, um, you know, pretty a pretty simple design for the game. Um, it, I really like the intake. How it's very obvious how that'll. Um, come in and get deposited into the catapult where it'll sit. Um, one thing I, a couple of things I didn't like about this robot were the sturdiness of the intake. It looks like that could be improved a lot, especially, you know, to fix the two sides to each other. Otherwise, compacts might cause that to bend and bind. And some other construction, especially on the climber, it's not attached to the robot fully. So um, it's not obvious how that'll happen. And it's a little bit over pocketed. Um, just using thinner material is often a better option mo in most cases than pocketing too much. Now uh, let's kick it over to Tyler to start our neck, our first giveaway of the evening. Yeah, so our first giveaway is going to be once again from our friends at West Coast Products, and we're going to kick it off with a nice one here. Starting out with the uh, SS Gearbox, sounds like a boat, by the way. Um, so SS Gearbox uh, will be given away. We actually have two of these we'll be giving away, so we'll draw two different winners for this. If you're interested in winning, you need to type in SS Gearbox in the chat right now, two words, SS space Gearbox. That's your ticket to enter. Don't forget, you do need to be following the fun channel in order to win, and any of our subscribers will get five times luck. So we appreciate everybody helping fun stay loud, live, and independent. Don't forget, you get free subs with Prime Gaming. We appreciate your support, and good luck, everybody. And now let's take a look at our next team, team number 678. Okay, so this robot right here was had a very solid drive train. The West Coast drive design it had was very solid. It did have a small, few small issues with that, like how their power breaker was kind of covered with this, looks like plastic sheet, so that's inaccessible. They also had a few issues with their claw here, how they pick up the balls. It looked very heavy and it was held on to this gearbox down here with only one long hex shaft. So that will probably break the first time the robot goes on the field. This hook on the elevator here is also only held on off of the servo motors. So that will probably also not work that great. Uh, elevator is very solid and overall That's very nice robot. So we'll take a look at uh, team number 462 in rank 40. So this was composed of members from team 599. And I what I liked about this robot was the use of an intake that handed off um, into a claw. And this is one of the few robots that we'll see in this competition that had a, a claw that could raise all the way up to the height of the top of the truss to try to pull the ball off of the truss. Um, as a judging team, we discussed that and came to the conclusion that unless that mechanism was very lightweight, and there are a couple that did achieve that, um, you're raising your center of gravity so drastically to get to that height that you're going to most likely get tipped over by the heavy defense that will be played in this game with a guaranteed, you know, one robot playing defense all the time. Um, with regards to 462, I liked that they had a kind of interesting buddy bar that would deploy out the back um, and then other teams could hook onto that. That's one way to kind of simply tackle the hanging challenge and assist their partners. 
Um, and I also thought their intake was robust enough, but there's some missing details. There's some interferences, um, and that kind of held it back overall. Next, we'll be taking a look at team number 449 in rank 51. Okay, this is one of the more interesting robots that I looked at. It's the only one I saw that had hexagonal shaped bumpers around the robot. But that design makes more sense because they have this big turret in the middle that rotates their entire superstructure, including their uh, elevators here on the side for climbing the truss, as well as this garbage here for picking up the balls. Um, one of the shiniest robots we saw as well, but it had no electronics on it. So can't be a very effective robot if there aren't many electronics or any at all on there. Next, we'll be taking a look at team number 589 in rank 48. I really like the idea of this robot. First of all, right, it's based off of the 254 and 1678 paradigm during 2014. Um, some questions that I had were obviously the electronics placement and where the electronics are, as well as the transfer from the rollers into the uh, ball handler. Um, firstly, I would like to make the point here that with these balls, you do not want to have the roller shaped this way. Um, instead, this roller will push the balls away from the robot instead of uh, vectoring it into the center. And that's an important thing to consider. Um, but otherwise, I love the design. I love the intent behind it. But it can be polished up in just a few more ways. Next up, we got team number 665, Paradox, in rank 44. So this is a really creative robot. Um, and it's very heavily detailed. Lots of wires catted, um, everything done. But I just couldn't see it being very effective at all. So they've got a buddy climb system where in the front, it doesn't look like they could fit a robot on in the back. It looks fine, but um, the, also for their intake and their ball path, there's really no way for the ball to get from the intake to the shooter and then to stay in the shooter before being shot. So um, there's really not much to say there. It just, um, you know, having the, you know, getting the ball path and the functions of your robot worked out before doing the wires is um, usually a good thing to do. Too true. Next up, we've got team number 650, Seven of Spades in rank 28. Okay. Team 650 had what I thought was a very good robot. I believe it's the only, only one here we saw that had a butterfly drive train, which was interesting. I would have used a swerve drive personally for this game because those are widely available, widely tested off the shelf parts that you can just buy and use. Uh, the elevator and grabber reminded me a lot of a 2018 robot more than what I would have expected for this game. But I think it would be, I think this design would still be very effective for picking up these balls off the truss because the intake there is on the elevator, but I would have liked to see some mechanism for picking up the balls off the ground, not just off the truss. All right. Next up, we've got team number 652, Dremel Simps in rank 47. What I liked about 652 was that they admitted in their scouting document that they were quite inexperienced. Um, and that they tried to design a simple robot that was within their limits. And I did think that they achieved that. They created an elevator with a claw on an arm on top that could grab the ball off the truss, and they're using that same claw to pick up the balls from the floor. I do think that that floor intake is heavily compromised, um, but in general, I think that this is a reasonable architecture as for like maybe a third robot on an alliance. One thing I would have liked to see was some way to hold the ball in the puncher as you're driving around on the field. I think that's something that a lot of teams missed. Um, and the cost of that is that the ball will pop out when you get hit from the side. And now you've you know just lost 20 seconds hunting it back down. Thank you. And now I'm going to kick it back to Tyler to end our first giveaway and start our next one. Yeah, so once again, we're going to be drawing uh, from our friends at West Coast Products uh, for the SS Gearbox. 
I don't know what a boat sound makes. Oh, I don't know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> All right. So SS Gearbox was the keyword uh, for that. We're going to draw two winners. Don't forget if you win, please, 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 please send us your shipping information. First name, last name, mailing address. Zip code, city, all that stuff. I know I have to say it every time, but for some reason, people still don't send me that. Uh, with that said, the first winner is going to be uh, Cabin Tech. Congratulations, rigged emotes, as Cabin Tech is a subscriber. So that's our first winner on this. And hopefully it's not of our host, by the way. So, because uh, always we got to redraw. And the second one is going to be uh, Trishula5555. Five, 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 five. Congratulations. Actually, both subs, so lots of rigged emotes. We clearly have rigged it for our subs to win. But don't worry, lots more giveaways uh, come up, including. Our next one uh, that we have, which is going to be a two-inch straight flex wheel. Uh, see, it's actually the, it's the 40A wheel, just as a heads up. I don't know if I have the right one up on screen. Uh, but you get two of those. We're giving away two separate ones uh, for this. So congratulations for whoever's going to win that. And the keyword for that is going to be all black. Two words, all black. Uh, that's the keyword to win, and we'll draw in a little bit. Don't forget, make sure you are following in order to win. Good luck, everybody. And next up, we've got team number 656, the New York Knicks of CAD in rank 54. Team 656 had a very simple robot here. They had a well-designed West Coast drive with some custom gearboxes, which was always nice to see. They, however, on the superstructure, they did have a lot of these components here, like their ground intake riding on just the output shafts of the motors, which is not going to be very strong in competition. And with how it has these one by two aluminum box extrusions as the intake, I think those will get dented or those will break easily when they are under heavy defense. I would have also liked to see a couple more, more refined details. Like on their bumpers, the numbers were a single flat extrusion boss i would have liked to see a wrapped sketch around the contours of the bumpers just to give it a nicer appearance next we'll take a look at team number 578 utterly chaotic uh who yep. came in at rank 18. so 578 had a lot of really great aspects going for them i really enjoyed first of all the overall aesthetic of the robot it's very um well done and very well designed um, in terms of kind of the aesthetics and the whole package. Um, the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the intake. Um, I have some serious questions about reliability of this intake over time, especially with side collisions. Um, the polycarbonate plates aren't doing much to really um, shield the aluminum plates, the heavily pocketed aluminum plates from side impacts. And any deflection or any force put on the polycarbonate plates is going to transfer over to the aluminum plates and cause those to permanently yield. Um, second of all, on the shooter, um, one thing to really note here is that if you look at the mechanics and the geometry, the moment arm uh, of the piston acting on the uh, lever arm is not very large. Um, this means that there's not a lot of initial force for the ball moving and to actually shoot the ball, um, making this a somewhat uh, less effective shooter design. Lastly, I think the attention to detail for the electronics was really great. The only thing is that the pneumatics were um, floating in air. <laughs> Next up, we'll be taking a look at Team Photon 682 in rank 49. I thought this was a really great design. It's obvious to see from the design that we have that um, of the ball path and how they were planning to solve all of the major game challenges. Um, a couple of things to note here is that intake, again, definitely not strong enough to withstand the rigors of this game. We want to use much stronger, much stiffer way, um, much stronger, much stiffer design. Um, something else is, again, like this uh, design is not very fleshed out. Most of, most of it is uh, simple shapes, which is great for layout, but, um, you know, robots are won and lost in CAD. So, um, you know, having those minute details in your design is very important. And next we'll be taking a look at team number 563, Mountain Area, Mountain Area, Area Robotics in rank 38. So this robot looked, is the kind of robot that looks good from 20 feet, but not so good once you get up close. It does look like the design would be very effective, 
but looking at some of the finer details of the robot, it looked like in CAD, a lot of the parts didn't line up. There were some places where shafts didn't stick all the way into or through bearings like they should. And some things just didn't line up all the way, which makes it so robot couldn't be assembled if this were to be built in the real world. Next up, we've got team number 655, Creeps of Wrath, uh, in rank 21. So 655 has a kind of interesting packaging for a flywheel shooter that I gave some creativity points for. The intake is very long and comes around the shooter, and then it has kind of a lower uh, release point on the shooter and uses the shooter as part of the initial ball path. Um, I also kind of liked their climber a lot. It was very kind of narrow, skinny, um, and fast, and will be pretty good at knocking the ball down. In general, though, this robot was missing some uh, detail points. I also thought that pocketing the intake tube arms right at the middle where they're going to bend when hit is not a good idea. Um, just if you are really desperate for weight, pocket the belly pan or something like that. So I think, you know, it gets a little too easy in the catathon to just throw pocketing when it really can hurt you in the effectiveness score. Next up, we've got team number 676, Disco Bots, in rank 58. Yeah, so this robot had a lot of good things going for it. The idea was simple behind it, having an arm to pick up the ball and then deposit it into the low or high goal. Um, unfortunately, on the other hand, I would like to see a lot more detail on this robot as well as kind of questioning the um, two side plates as well in terms of kind of material utilization and what they add to the stiffness of the structure. Um, furthermore, we have um, that motor poking through the side plates. And overall, little clearances like this are what um, I would like to see improved in the future. Next, we've got team number 591, Night Vision, rank 26. I really like this robot. It looks like it took a lot of inspiration from a lot of standard 2014 designs, which isn't a bad thing, of course. Um, the intake, definitely strong enough to withstand um, competition, I think. Um, let's see. Yeah, so um, it looks like there are some unfinished mechanisms and a lot of detail missing from the CAD. So, um, you know, for an even better score, try and uh, work on that detail a little bit. Then up next, we've got uh, T number 672, Titan Robotics, rank 32. Okay. 672 is a robot here, looked very well designed. They had lots of good detail in their chains. They had, a, instead of just having a rectangular shaped path, they had the actual chain texture, which is very nice to see. They had most of the fasteners modeled, not all of them. Uh, the elevator and intake was very well designed. It looks robust and it doesn't poke out of the bumpers, so we don't have to worry too much about it breaking under defense. Uh, the one major downside I saw was that there's only the, I only saw these two air tanks here and there's three fairly large pneumatic cylinders on the back of the puncher mechanism. And these air tanks will only have enough stored for one, maybe two shots, and they'll take a while to refill. Next up, we've got team number 547, Brazilian Storm, in rank 53. So I thought this was a very simple robot architecture. It's a roller claw on an elevator. Um, a lot of the execution of that was uh, struggling at the finer details. This claw is a very heavy. The plates probably should have been polycarbonate to be more robust. The pivot uses Bosch motors, which I thought was funny. I hadn't seen one of those in years. Um, and I did really like the drive base. This has a six sim uh, drivetrain with traction wheels. So I think this could be um, reasonable as a defensive powerhouse. And I was also unclear how this robot fit into the starting configuration. And it was missing some details like the climber hooks. It doesn't know, it can't climb because it has no hooks on the elevator. And in rank 41, we've got team number 647, Safety Goggles. So this robot makes a lot of sense as a second pick. And I mean this in a good way. This robot, when paired with another good cycler, can just absolutely demolish on the field. And something I'd like to consider as well is just adding a little bit more electronics um, and just adding a climber mechanism as well. Because at the highest level of play, 
climbing is really what makes or break this game. After that, we've got in rank 24, team number 420, Bordy Alliance. <laughs> this is my favorite team number. Uh, team 420 here had a very nice robot. Uh, it had the SDS Mark II Swervipe, which is... I think if you're going to do a swerve drive, you should use the off-the-shelf ones because swerve drives are fairly complex mechanisms, and it's best to buy one that is tested and proven by multiple teams instead of building your own and hoping that it's reliable when there are options that are proven reliable already out there. This robot also had a intake that was made of pocketed 1x2 aluminum extrusions, which, as I've noted with the previous robot will probably bend or break, especially if they're pocketed under defense. And expect this to be a high defense game. In rank 62, we've got team number 646 at B for Tronics. I really like the idea of this robot, but the implementation leaves a lot to be desired. So like, especially the swerve drive, it's cool that they did a custom one, but there are a lot of problems with it, especially like it looks like the module would fall off the robot if you tried to put it on the field. And the intake, um, too small for the ball, of course, and then also trying to grab the ball and then bring it back up into your intake or into your shooter isn't a great idea. Trying to get that you know, as fast as streamlined as possible um, will increase your cycling and your, um, and your drop rate quite a bit. So. Next in rank 34, we've got team number 581, Cheddar Defender. So this robot was also very simple. It had intakes on the side to pick up the balls from the ground, which I like seeing that on both sides of the robot because that will make it easier for you to pick up balls when you're under defense or around other robots. However, th this robot had a swerve drive that was powered by entirely by Neo 550 motors, which will not have enough power to keep this robot moving. It'll probably move a few feet, and then those motors will burn out. After that, we've got one of our oldest Catathon teams in rank number 30, team number eight, Caddy Wampus. So I had a fun time geeking out, judging this robot. I mean, we can clearly see it wasn't finished from a detail perspective, but the mechanisms that were done around the pivot of the claw and the telescoping of the tubes, I thought were uh, very creative. They have a drop center um, hypoid uh, bevel gear train driving a uh, fish tape, like 118, 2020 style extension of the climber forks. Um, and then the mechanism that does the claw pivoting uses a double-sided GT2 belt as a harmonic drive mechanism, which is normally something that's very hard to fabricate in FRC. I do think both of those mechanisms are not the right choice. Like there's a reason why teams aren't using them. They're very complicated and uh, not that robust, but they're certainly fun to see catted. And I'm sure it was a fun design challenge for the students. Um, overall, I think the architecture is fine and the missing details kind of held them back a lot in their placing. Up next, we've got team number 645, a dirt man in rank 43. Yeah, so uh, what else can I say about this robot? I'm a big fan. And to add on, <laughs> to add on, first of all, the elevator is a nice touch. The elevator really um, serves the case for this robot in the end game. Um, in the team submission, um, the, the submitter wrote that they had done the calculations for the fan and that the fan would work. Um, I do have a question for that submitter. And it's if they consider the Bernoulli effect as well. Um, I think this would be a good thing to consider when you're trying to blow the ball away, or in your case, probably move yourself across the field. But again, the sort of drive is also a nice touch um, just for the omnidirectional translation. But yeah, what else can I say? I'm just a big fan. In rank 29, we've got team number 568, Blue Cheese. This is a really creative design. Um, there's some missing elements, of course. Uh, something I really liked about this one was the wings for catching the balls. You know, as you're dropping the balls off that truss, 
Um, if you're not grabbing it off there, catching it is super, super important because you don't want it bouncing away from you across the field. So having mechanisms specifically designed to do that is a great touch. Um, this robot is, could use some more um, thinking out on the mechanisms, especially on the climber and the shooter, but and the intake, but overall has some really good um, good ideas in it. Up next in rank number 25, we've got team number 182, Redbird Robotics. Okay, team 182 here had what looked like a very solid robot. Um, the elevator with the forks on the end to poke the balls off of the truss looked like a very solid idea. The buddy climb was also looks like it would be very solid. I'm surprised we didn't see more of those, to be honest, with these rules. However, it also, once again, had the same two by one box tube pocketed intake, which will, as I said before, probably break if you get hit by a defender. And one final note, I hope team is listening. Team 182 named the robot Blinky, if you understand that joke. So I'm going to tell them that they missed a lot of the small things, but not all of them. All right, now we're going to kick it back over to Tyler to end our last giveaway and start a new one. Yeah, plenty more giveaways to go here, so make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you stick around for all these fantastic teams that are working hard and uh, support them all. I don't want to see people leaving like, oh, my team is just shown. I'm going to leave. No, don't do that. So, All right, so with that said, we're giving away uh, from West Coast Products once again uh, the 2-inch straight flex wheel. And two winners are going to be drawn for this. First one is going to be uh, Doomed Meteor. Congratulations, Doomed Meteor. And the second one is going to be uh, Jay Wagner, 2826. Good to see you, man. So uh, so congratulations on that. Please, once again, make sure you message first updates now, either on Discord or on uh, Twitch uh, with all your shipping information. I'm not going to respond to you till after the stream, by the way, for the one person asking. So, uh, so good luck on the next one, which is coming up, is going to be uh, some not bondage wire, but bonded wire. Uh, so bonded wire is going to be uh, the next thing. It uh, It's a bonded wire with uh, a nut something i forget what it's called on there so with wire nuts so i'm going to pretend i know what all oh. that is so uh, but it is on wcp's website so go check that out if you want to and the uh giveaway for that no it's not bondage it's twisted uh twisted is going to be your giveaway uh keyword for that so type that in the chat that's your chance to win make sure you're following the channel and don't forget subs to get 5x luck to win good luck everybody we'll draw for that in a little bit and let's get back to the catathon Next up in rank number 20, we've got team number 662, Spartatronics. So I thought that this is a good example of a 254 2014 style flywheel architecture um, that was kind of looked at, but some of the key elements were not taken, and that kind of severely hurts it. Um, I think that the elevator was the best done mechanism on this robot. Constant force spring extend if those springs are strong enough, can be proven to be super fast. Um, and then the two-speed winch retraction, I also thought was a great idea. So you could pull it down really quickly after you knock the ball, um, or you could have the uh, slow retraction for a climb. The anti-tip wheels were a nice idea, but I think that they're just going to kind of get destroyed um, with how flimsy they are in cross-section. And then my main issue with this robot that I think applies to a lot of the flywheel shooters in this competition is that they looked at 254, they saw that they opened up to catch the ball, and they put a pneumatic cylinder there. But a pneumatic cylinder is going to have an extremely hard time, unless its bore is ridiculously huge, of holding in that superstructure while you're shooting. So your superstructure is going to open up based off of that cylinder acting literally as an air spring. And that's gonna vary your ball compression, vary your shot. And so what 254 had to do was put a piston on a piston to lock that piston in. You can see that implementation in the robot photo. And then later in the season, we changed it to a over center linkage that unfolded. And then when it was locked in, it would over center, meaning the load wasn't having to go through the cylinder. If more teams utilize that, then I think they would not have their flywheel shooters get as uh, shut down by me as I did in the grading. 
Next up, uh, with the darkest renders that aren't mine, uh, we've got in rank 39, 666 Party Time. Aaron? Yeah, so in terms of this robot, I really enjoyed a lot of the different um, just approaches to the game. I thought it was incredibly creative. And I really enjoyed that single with climbing hook right there. Um, I thought that the um, just approach to the game was really uh, well done. Um, but one thing I would like to draw attention to is just kind of the amount of unnecessary pocketing that's present uh, within the robot. Um, on the second slide, we see that on the gray bars, there's a lot of pocketing that doesn't contribute any strength uh, to the robot whatsoever. And it, you would save a lot on machine time by removing those pockets. Up next, we've got team number 616, Subduction, in rank 19. I really, really, really love the design of this robot. Um, one mechanism in particular I want to draw attention to is the elevator and arm system. So that's all one system. It's um, on a differential elevator so that pulling up uh, the both winches at the same time will lift the elevator, but changing the speed at which you're lifting will move the arm as well. And that's a really clever way to get movement on top of the elevator um, without running any wires or putting any motors on top of that. Um, and then of course with that, they've got a catching system on front that, um, you know, again, with the 254 clone stuff that um, you might have a hard time sticking in with that. Something else I wanted to mention about the superstructure on this robot was that it's only linked by a couple bars going around the shooter wheel. I can easily see that snapping that's not very rigidly connected. And thirdly, um, on the frame for the intake to open up for catching, it can't open up fully without going without causing some parts to intersect. So how they solved this was trying to use a magnetic sensor. And then um, I think the plan was to continuously open and close the piston to try and keep it in that position. And that'll dump a lot of air as well as move a lot and have a hard time like applying any force to the ball as you're catching it. So I don't feel like that would work very well for this robot. Next up, we've got in rank number 22, Team 246. Wow. Wow. That's just not the name of the team. That's also my reaction when I saw this robot. Um, I thought <laughs> that the rotating elevator was extremely interesting in the way that they used the um, uh, manipulator right there to both pick up balls uh, from the ground as well as pick up balls from the top of the trush. Um, something that I would like to see is just um, kind of an improvement on their serve drive that they have right now. Um, it's likely not an effective option, uh, option, and I don't think it particularly adds to this robot. I think more attention could have been given to kind of the shooting mechanism as well as the uh, rigidity of the overall structure. Um, furthermore, uh, I would like to assess how well the climbing hooks would work as well as the um, buddy climb. Um, the tubes right there look uh, rather thin, and I would like to see some analysis uh, going into that to verify that they won't deform excessively. But overall, yeah. pretty good robot. And next, we've got team number 538, Warped Paradox, in rank 57. Team 538's robot had something else that I thought was very unique. It had this plate on top that they called their shot blocker. Looking at how it's designed it's only supported by the metal down in the corners though and i think that when they try and use this it would probably the plastic panel will just break or it would not be effective at blocking very many shots from other robots it's also not very high off the ground so i think that they have to be very close to other robots in order for that to be effective um this robot was also missing some details like all of their fasteners and in some of their pockets, they're missing details like fillets in the corners, which you need to manufacture these parts unless you have an astronomical amount of money. <laughs> Up next, we've got uh, team number 673, Tams Formers in rank 52. So this team utilized kind of a side wheel accelerator for a shooter that I thought was very interesting. I also think in this game, having only two positions um, or maybe even only one position on the shooter is fine. There were a lot of infinitely adjustable shooters that would be much harder to tune and more complex. 
Um, there were a lot of dis detail issues going on in this robot. There were chain runs that didn't have any wrap or engagement on sprockets that were in the middle. So the chain would just deflect and skip over the teeth of those sprockets. Um, and then the elevator doesn't have any type of A-frame structure. So that's going to be like a wobbly tower. Uh, but it was a pretty solid submission all around. Next up, we've got team number 680, Cadlossal Squid in rank 33. Yeah, so this robot was an extremely creative design, especially with a double jointed arm um, and the use of a sideways elevator. But the truth is the actual practicality of this is somewhat questionable. It reminds me of a lot of 3647's 2019 robot. But again, going back to the concerns, um, the structural integrity is really in question, especially with the giant moment arm that you have on the elevator. Uh, the huge cantilever um, is, an is really just amplified by having the sprocket be on the outer rim of the ring right there. Um, furthermore, this being like a full contact game, if the arm is ramped into, then it's going to act as a huge lever arm and things are going to deform. Um, your forks could use some work as well, um, and you don't have an elevator spool. But overall, again, super creative design, but I'd just like to see some more refinement. Next up, we've got team number 654, Thermos team in rank 45. So team 654's robot was also a very simple design. One thing that stuck out to me immediately that I didn't particularly like was that their hood on the back of their shooter mechanism and their flywheel on the front had a lot of degrees of freedom to move them up and down and back and forth. And I think that would be even though they have the vision on there, I think that would be rather hard to control for the drivers. And I also think that those are potential points of failure. I would have liked to see mechanisms like those, how they're going to be under fairly high load. I would like to see those fixed and have the whole mechanism entirely on a turret to get that effect. Next up, we've got team number 439, Columbus Space Program. Rank 61. This is a great start to a robot design. Um, it looks like they've got an intake here and a catapult. Um, in addition to just generally fleshing out the entire design, it looks like um, I'd like to see some amount, some cup on the catapult so you can better control the ball, both while in the robot and while shooting it, as well as some thought into that intake, um, you know, how it's going to actually get out onto the front of the robot and um, actually acquire the ball because it looks like that front tube, even the intake does look pretty stiff for this game, but you know, actually getting out and hitting that ball. So it's a great start, but um, a bit more detail and refinement would be great. Next, we've got team number 658, Talonier's in rank 56. Okay, this is my <laughs> absolute favorite robot that I looked at this whole catathon, purely <laughs> because their drivetrain was the best I've almost ever seen. It's not powered by motors, but it's powered by pistons and a crankshaft. So it has a few pistons on each side that actuate back and forth, and that will cause the wheels to spin. However, I don't think this team realized you're going to need a lot of air storage to run that, and I didn't see much of that here. You're, like, you're gonna need a lot of air storage if you're going to be driving around more than five feet. The, Superstructure and mechanisms on top also were interesting, very unique. Um, they did look a little bit weak, like the posts, the extrusions on the side that are holding the center mechanism on, look like they'd be weak and might break when they rotate this uh, grabber in the center. This robot also had no electronics and it didn't have any fasteners or even bolt holes for those fasteners in their cab. Up next, we've got team number 642, the Muffin Men in rank 27. So this robot had a very creative use of a hooded flywheel shooter that where the hood actually flips up and locks into place to give them a higher release point and more wrap on the hood, allowing them to shoot from further away. I thought that was very interesting, but I really wish that it wasn't just like the ball itself opening the hood, because that means that your first shot is going to be scuffed and you need to. So there should be some pneumatic cylinders 
that do the hood raising there. Um, there were also a lot of details missing on the intake, uh, but I thought that the shooter flywheel section itself was quite well done. Um, and then also it's missing an A-frame on the elevator. If your hooks are at the back of your robot and you're going to cantilever your entire robot center of gravity off of your elevator, you probably need a, some type of A-frame there so that your elevator doesn't just rip apart the like six bolts holding it at the bottom. Next up, we've got team number 669, the Majestic Koalas in rank 55. Yeah, so for this robot, the idea is basically there. Um, this reminds me a lot of, I believe, Team 971's robot from 2014. And again, overall, I think just the components are there, the idea is there. We just need to flush out the cat a little bit. And one thing in particular I want to draw attention to is the piston. And that's an extremely small bore piston. Um, and remember that force is equal to pressure times area. Uh, so you're not going to have a lot of force right there. So just keep in mind basic physics concepts and remember to keep your robot within frame perimeter and add electronics and you should be good to go. Up next, we've got team number 554, uh, Maverick Boiler Robotics, rank 60. This was um, definitely a unique design. It's got uh, an SDS sort of module, which is a pretty good design for, um, pretty good idea for this game overall. But um, really what interested me was the superstructure and the ball acquisition method. Um, so a lot of times we talk about to, you know, grab it um, or touch it, got it to intakes, which this is not. It requires you to stop in front of the ball and then push your intake down on top of it which is not a very quick mechanism to pick up the ball, nor is it very secure. Um, and so this is, um, with a bit of a different intake design, this could be a pretty solid second pick. Up next, we've got team number 207, Abracadabra. Okay. Rank 42. I also really like this robot from that I saw. It had, just like the previous robot, it had the off-the-shelf sword modules, which I, think is a great idea that had some belts instead of rollers and wheels on their intake, which I thought was interesting. I actually like that idea because I think that the balls will grip well on that because there's a lot of area on the inside of those belts for the balls to contact with. Um, what some things I'd noticed about this robot that I didn't like is there was no system for battery retention. So it's just kind of floating in the middle of the robot. And it was also, from what I could tell, it was lacking a ground intake that would feed well into those belts. Because if they stick those just straight out when the elevator's at the lowest position, it might be able to pick up the balls off the ground. But I don't know how effective that would be. Up next, we've got in rank number 59, team number 359. Not the Hawaiian kids, but Robotots. So team 359 submitted a kind of incomplete robot but I did like the creativity of the mechanisms that they had finished. Um, and so I gave them points for that. So what was interesting to me was the swerve modules were mounted on leaf springs. And then they claimed that they would drop from the hanging bar to get the 10 points or whatever at the beginning of the match. And the leaf springs would make it so their swerves wouldn't just get obliterated. And they would be the first one to get to the ball on top of the truss. So I think that's interesting. The problem is that now those leaf springs, those are the limiting factor on the amount of traction that you're going to be able to get, not the weight of your robot. Um, and so that means that you might not be able to push other people. You might just be getting pushed around. And maybe that's OK for a swerve. Overall, though, this robot was missing a lot of details. And that's kind of what held it back from a, a being a, a fully ranked complete submission. Next up, we've got team number 667, Gear It Forward in rank 36. Yeah, so this robot submission was extremely creative. I haven't seen a double reverse four bar being used in this game, um, <laughs> at least in my submission set. And I really enjoy the creative use of the friction brake, which is kind of obscured by the front beam right there. Um, in terms of detail, I would like to see some more fasteners and just a little bit more detail like shaft collars added onto this robot. And in terms of performance, this intake could use a lot of work um, as likelihood of picking up a ball is low and there's a high risk of shaft deformation with the amount of cantilever that's present at the moment. Um, furthermore, with a... 
double reverse four bar. Um, it likely has no torque to climb, and the catapult uh, has questionable efficacy. Next up, we've got team number 558, Girls of Steel, in rank 23. It's a pretty solid design um, as a whole, but the issues lie mostly in the execution. It's a claw archetype, of, uh, as you can see. Um, the biggest issue I saw here is that the claw is pretty small for the ball, actually. So it's quite a bit smaller than the ball actually is. And I don't think you want that much compression for the intake. Um, another thing here is that the uh, elevator, usually in FRC, we've got the stages compressed in between each other, with which holds it together. But for this one, they were back off the back of each other, which would mm -hmm. pretty much just make it fall apart instantly. That along with a couple other manufacturability issues um, lead this robot to have um, quite a few more details it could, and a little bit more thought put into it. Next up, we've got team number 47910, D-Men. Yeah, so this robot was an overall extremely impressive submission and a lot of clear attention to detail for this robot. Um, there's an obvious design hint from uh, FRC 254 in 2014, but I would have liked to see a little bit more nuance in the um, otherwise uh, in the imitation of it. Um, looking at the drivetrain, the drivetrain is pretty standard um, West Coast drive, and there's nothing to be really complained about there. It's pretty rock solid. Um, in terms of the elevator, um, I would like to see um, just a little bit of analysis on the buddy climbing um, on the back over there. Um, just like a little bit of FEA screenshots just to ensure that um, one, the center of gravity is balanced and um, that it can support the weight of both robots. Um, and moving forward kind of into the last slide, I'd like to note that the, um, the shooter has a two position shooter, which will likely be useful. Um, and furthermore, I would like to just make a general comment that this robot is excessively over pocketed. Um, you can get rid of like all of this pocketing and first of all, it saves you machine time and it doesn't make your robot extremely weak. Um, coming up next, we've got team number 386, Swine Rats. Oh, I just wanted to make a quick correction on the slides. So team 479 that you just assessed, they are rank 18. We had uh, team 558 at rank um, 23. So team 386 is up now. Okay. Oh, they all say 23? Okay. Team uh, 386 is ranked 25. Team 558 was ranked 50th. Oh, 558 Sorry for that. was also 50. So we've got team number three up now, Swine Rats. Let's talk a little bit about them. Okay, Team 386 had a very interesting robot. They had a custom swerve design for, that looked pretty solid. Their intake on the front here had some nice had a nice linkage to pivot this shooter and intake. I, uh, the shooter and intake are powered by the same motor connected with some belts. I would have liked to see those with powered by separate motors so that since these wheels are so close together, you don't accidentally shoot out a ball as you're intaking it because that would be counterproductive. Uh, I would have also liked to see probably some more wheels on the hex shaft here that is the intake instead of just these compliant wheels here at the center. Um, probably some vectored intake wheels on the edges or at the very least more of the compliant wheels. It also had, just like other robots, the two by one uh, box extrusions pocketed on their intake, which would break and that would be quite a shame because that would mean their nice linkages would fall off the robot. It also looked to me like it might be very back heavy because their elevator had a lot of stages to it, so it could get pretty tall. And with it only on four wheels, since this robot is a swerve drive, I would be very afraid that the robot would tip backwards once that elevator is extended all the way up. And for our last robot, before we hit the top 15, we've got team number 644, NC. 644 was really creative, especially with how everything just folds together inside of the frame perimeter. Uh, the cat is fairly detailed, although there's some missing bolts in some places. And really, we'd want to assess how effective the intake will be. And first of all, the handoff to the shooter. 
Um, this bottom plate on the bottom right there yeah, is fairly unnecessary. It could get be gotten rid of fairly easily. And maybe you should just consider mounting to the drivetrain instead of this top plate. Um, overall, this is really decent. And um, maybe the last thing is you don't really need a Falcon on the intake. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.